We continue now at the top of Daf Petasam and Bezim Mesechas Yivamas. This is Yivamas Daf 89b. And the previous summer of Nasan Baroshia said, let's say a person separates Truma from Tame and Tatar. So he said it's not going to be effective in terms of making the remainder uh, that it's not Tevil, but however, the Truma that he separated is going to be considered to be Truma. And so the Gemara now asks on that, what's the difference between that case and the case over here in the following Mishnah? This is a Mishnah in Demai. Mishnah says, Minanokoval of Truma. So Truma, again, you're going to take from a potted plant where there's a hole on a potted plant where there is no hole. And we say the Truma is effective. However, the Mishnah continues, that truma that was separated, even though it's effective truma, you can't eat that truma until you separate on that truma and miser from somewhere else. Rashi over here says, meaning even a Kohen can't have that truma. This saw that you separated, you have to separate more truma on that. Because we consider the part that you separated to be tevel gomer. So what's the difference between the two cases? And the Gemara answers, Shani Hoch, it's different over here in the case, again, where you separate from the Tameh and the Tar, to me the Oraisa Trumam al Yossi, because in this case, on a Doraisa level, it's completely good Truma. As Rashi over here says, Shani Hoch, but Tameh Vitar, to me the Oraisa Trumam al Yossi, here on a Doraisa level, it's completely good, and therefore you don't have to separate again. But if you have a situation where you take from a, a potted plant with a hole in it to a potted plant without a hole, there you're separating from the one with the hole that's getting nutrition from the ground, the nutrients from the ground, and therefore you're taking from something that's really chayiv uh, in Shuma and something that's really putter on a Doraisa level in Shuma. Therefore, there's not going to be a shame Shuma. That's why it's Tevel, and it's going to be Osir for the Kohen. And Rashi continues, even though this is really not Shem Truma and it's also, but the Rabbanon say he has to give it to the Kohen, whole of the Shem Truma, since at the end of the day he separated it, he called it Truma. And this Yisrael that's giving it to the Kohen, so he's going to have to separate from somewhere else on this piece of food, Truma and Meiser. Now you don't need to separate again from the uh, plant that grew in the potted plant that did not have a hole. The Truma delay me because there the whole obligation is only me at the end of the day, he did separate for that. And Rashi points out, Now what about the reverse case that we talked about before, where you separate from the pot from the uh, pot that does not have a hole to the pot that does have a hole? There we said it is Truma, and the Kohen can have it. Because in that case, what you're really doing is you're separating from the one that's potter on the one that's chayef. Therefore, even though the item that you're separating on, on behalf of of is not pottered and still in a separate. But it's not considered truma. But there we don't say he can't eat it. Because there we don't care if the Kohen eats it. Because there, there's no din of Tevel and Truma on this item at all anyway, so it's totally fine for the Kohen. And the Gemara continues this idea that if you separate Truma from the Tameh and the Tar on a Doraisa level, it's good Truma. It follows what Rabbi Loi said. Because Rabbi Loi said, Truma. So Truma, how do you know that if you separate Truma from that which is bad on that which is good? Again, similar to our case from the Tame on the Tar. How do you know that's considered good on a Doraisa level? Because the Pasuk says, It says you shouldn't sin when you separate the Truma. Now, if it wasn't holy, meaning if it wasn't Chal, if the Truma was not effective, there wouldn't be a sin over here that you because you didn't actually do anything. So So from here we see that if if you take truma from the bad on the good, the truma is still going to be effective. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Rabba le Rav Chista. So Rabba said to Rav Chista, Ledidach, according to your opinion that you had on the previous Amr, the Amr lo asav lo klum kaliker, that you said that in a situation where a person separates Truma from the Tameh and the Tar, he said it, you didn't do anything at all. The Afilo ha griva hadulatifla, even that part that you separated is considered Tevel, it's not considered Truma. My time and what's the reason for that? Gezeira dilma pasha velo mafresh, because we're afraid that if we say that it's Truma, the person will make a mistake and he'll end up not separating again. Really, he's required to separate Truma again, but he won't do that because he's going to think this was effective. So therefore we say that it's Tevel. But the problem is, does that really make sense? Do we ever find a situation where on a Doraisa level we're saying the Truma is really effective? But just because the person might make an error, so the Rabbanan take it away from its shame Truma and say that it's Chulin. Is Bezin allowed to come in and uproot something from the Torah? 
And so the Gemara says, Amar Lei said back to him, Viat Lotzis Bra, and you don't think that Bezin can come along and uproot something from the Torah? Our very Mishnah says they can do that. Vatanan, what do we learn in our Mishnah? We said, Havlad Mamzer Mizel Mizel. We said that the child is a Mamzer from both the first husband and the second husband. Now, Bishlam Mishani Mamzer, I understand from the second man the child is a Mamzer because that was in a situation of adultery. She was really her first husband. Her husband was actually still alive. So the man she was with second is actually adultery and the child's a Mamzer. Elame Risham, but the child she has from the first husband, Amai, what's the problem over there? Ishtohi, the, the, this is really his wife. Yisrael Malyu, and he's a kosher, kosher, kosher Yisrael. He's a kosher Jew. So why should that be? Why should that be considered a mamzer? And not only that, the kosherina leva mamzeres. Apparently, we're considering this kind of mamzer, and we're allowing that mamzer child to marry a mamzeres. That means we're uprooting something from the Torah. So Amar Le, so he said back to him, No, Hachi Amar Shmuel, this is what Shmuel says, Asr Mamzeres. It's a Durabonin that we're considering him a Mamzer, but we're not going so far as to say that that child would be mutter for, for a Mamzeres. No, we're just being strict. We're saying the child's a Mamzer, can't marry into the community, but it's still Asr Mamzeres. V'chein ki Asr Ravin Amar Rabbi Yochanan, and similarly, when Ravin came, he said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Asr Mamzeres, that the child is Asr Mamzeres. The Amai Kari Le Mamzer, so why are we calling the child a Mamzer? La Osr Bebas Yisrael, we just mean to say that that the child's not allowed to marry a Bas Yisrael. As Rashi over here says, Laosro Bas Yisrael, this is just a fine. Well, the Hachmer Velaso Siog Torah, it's a way of making a fence around the Torah. Vein Akira, we're not uprooting anything. Avalahakal Divre Torah Akira. Now, if we were going to be lenient and allow this child to marry a Mamzeres, there we'd already be uprooting the Torah and saying the child from the first husband is considered a Mamzer even on a Doraisa level, so to speak, meaning the Rabbonan uprooted what the Torah said and allowed a Mamzeres, but that's not what we're doing over here. And the Gemara continues, Shalach le Rav Chista le Rabba. Rav Chista sent to Rabba biyad Rav Achabar Rav Hun in the hands of Rav Achabar Rav Hun in the following message. V'yein Bezin ma'asnin la'akor davar min torah Is it true that Bezin does not have the ability to uproot something from the Torah? Vatanya, but what about what we learned in the following b'raisa? The b'raisa says, Me'ei masai odom yoresh is ishto katana. At what point in time can a husband or can a man inherit his wife who is still a minor? Talking over here of a situation where it was just a dirabon on marriage. Rashi over here says, as a shto katana, in Mesa she dies. We don't say, well, how do we know this is really a marriage? Because maybe in the future, when she would have gotten older, she would have refused the marriage. And then it would turn out that she wasn't his wife. And we're talking about a Yosoma, she's an orphan. She doesn't have a father. If a minor has a father, he can marry her off on a Doraisa level. We're talking here where she has no father, and therefore this marriage is only Midra Bonan. She has the theoretical ability to do Mion. And so at what point in time do we say that he, he inherits? This is Katana, because maybe again, in theory, she would have refused the marriage. So Beshamay Omer and Beshamay say Mishetamur Bekomosa when she reaches her full height. Rashi over here says Mishetamur Bekomosa Kishatigel Apirka Beshan Muvavasar, meaning she reaches maturity, she reaches the right age of maturity, and she reaches the time where she has the signs of maturity, she has the the hairs of maturity. So that's when, at that point in time, she's considered his wife, and he can inherit her. Beisel Alom and Beisel say Mishetichnas Mishetikanes Lachupa when she enters the Chupa, and Rabbi Eliezer Omer Rabbi Eliezer says Mishetiboel. It's from the time that they have relations. Viyarsha umetamelo, and at that point in time, he can inherit her. He becomes tame for her. In other words, she's considered his full fledged wife. Let's say he's a Kohen, he can become tame even if she dies uh, on, on her account. Viyocheles begino trum, and also she can eat because of that marriage. At that point, that's considered a marriage, and she can eat because of him trum. Let's say again, he's a Kohen. And the Gemara now continues. Beshamay Omri Mishetamor Bekomosa. Beshamay say it's when she reaches this maturity in terms of the signs of maturity and the age of maturity. So the question is, Afagav, Delo Nichnas Olchopa, even though she didn't enter Chopa, it's enough just to reach that age. And Rashi over here says, Viafagav, Delo Nichnas Olchopa, Vakaimalam, but haven't we learned? Afilo Begadol, even by an adult, Ishto Arusa, if a woman is just betrothed and is, there's no Chopa, Lo Onein, Velo Metame, Lo Mesa, and Yarsha, all these halachas don't apply. It's not considered the marriage in terms of becoming coming an Onain, in terms of the halachas of Onain, the halachas of being metameter, the halachas of inheriting her. So therefore, of course, you're going to need chuppah. So that's the first question of the Gemara. How could Beisham, I say, Mishetamur become Masa, even though there's no chuppah? And so the Gemara clarifies, Eimer, rather you should say, Mishetamur become Masa, Vitikon is l'chuppah. According to Beisham, she has to reach that age and that maturity, but she also has to enter into the chuppah. 
But that which you said she has to enter chuppah, it's only it's only if she reaches her full height. Then the chuppah is effective. But if not, then the chuppah is not going to be effective. Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Mishati Boil, and then the next Tana was Rabbi Eliezer. He says from the time that she has relations with him. So the Gemara asks on that, Vam Rabbi Eliezer, but didn't Rabbi Eliezer say, Ein Maisa Katana Klum, what a Katana does, that's not worth anything, that has no real uh, legal status. So therefore, how could it be effective when she has relations? And so to that, the Gemara says, Ema Misha Tagdil Viti Boil. Rabbi Eliezer must be saying she get, she also reaches adulthood and she has relations. That's the point in time. In any case, now the Gemara brings its proof. Katani Mios Yarsha. What does it say over here, nevertheless? It says that he's able to inherit her. And so the Gemara asks, but over here, to me Doraisa Avu Yarisla. On a Doraisa level, really her father should inherit her, meaning to say her relatives on her father's side should really be inheriting her. There's no real, this is only a Durabonan marriage, and there's no real inheritance. Why is he inheriting? And apparently, the Rabbonan are allowing him to inherit. So you see that the Rabbonan can uproot something from the Torah. Rashi over here says, This marriage, if she's still a minor, it's only a marriage midrabbonin. And so really on a Doraisa level, the people who should inherit her are the relatives through her father's side. We say there's a Nisue Katana that we wanted to make it effective on a Doraisa level that people shouldn't treat her in a Hafkar manner. But on a Doraisa level, But the Torah doesn't allow such a Kiddushin. It's only a Durabonan Kiddushin. So if, if it's only a Durabonan Kiddushin, again, it seems like the Durabonan are uprooting something from the Torah. And so the Gemara says, uh, again, umid rabbonon yoris labal. This is only um, on a derabbonon level that the husband is inheriting her. So how do they uproot something from the Torah? And the Gemara answers, hefker bez and hefker. Gemara says, no, by money issues, there we are, everyone agrees that the rabbonon can uproot something that's in the Torah. Rashi says, v'chalmidi de memor lav akiri. Something that has to do with money matters. There's a rule that bezin can make things hefker. The Yom Rabbi Yitzchak, because Rabbi Yitzchak said, minayin shefker bez and hefker. How do we know this concept of hefker, of hefker bez and hefker? Shenemar, it's like the Pasuk says, kol asher lo yavu. So you see that, that what's happening over here? They're making everything hefker. You see that the court has that ability. And the Gemara continues, Rebbe Lozer, Rebbe Lozer says from here, from a different Pasuk, it says, It talks about the inheritance that was given over to Klal Yisrael. And the Gemara says, What's going on here with the Roshim, the heads, the leaders, and why are they mentioned by the Avos? It's to tell you the following Chiddush. We make the following drosha, just like fathers give an inheritance to their sons, call mashayir to all that they want to, afroshim, so to the leaders, in this case the Gemara is using that to understand as hefker bezdin, like the bezdin, the leadership as well, manchilin esa'am kol mashayir to, they're able to allow the people to inherit all that they want. But the Gemara still says we have a proof, because umetamila, it also says this marriage is enough to allow that he can become tamaytar. But over here, Dimi Doraisa Avia Metame Lana. Doraisa levels her father who's being Metame for her. He's the one. She's really in his Rishus. Umidrabonan Metame Lobal. This is only Allah Midrabonan that this is really a husband who can be Metame to her. And so, therefore, again, we have the same issue. You see, again, a proof that the Rabbonan can come along and uproot something from the Torah. They allow this husband who's a Kohen, only, who's a husband only at the Rabbonan level and who's a Kohen, they allow him to be Metame and so to that, the Gemara answers, Mishum da Havelah Meis Mitzvah. No, the reason is, the real reason he can metame is because anyhow, it's a case of a Meis Mitzvah, and therefore there's no one else to deal with it, therefore he's allowed to. But the Gemara continues, Umi have a Meis Mitzvah, but is this girl really considered a Meis Mitzvah to her husband? Vatanya, but we learned in a Brisa, Ezeu Meis Mitzvah, what's considered a Meis Mitzvah? Kol Shein Lo Kovern, it's somebody who has no one to bury them. But if you call out, you ask for assistance, and people will come and they'll answer, so that's not considered a meis mitzvah. And over here also, the woman again, she's only married to this person who was only a in marriage, but she has other relatives. If you're going to call those relatives, they will take care of her. This should not be considered a 
Mace Mitzvah, and he should not be allowed to be Metame Law, unless you say that Rabbanon are able to uproot something from the Torah. But the Gemara says, no, Hachanami here also, Kevin Delo Yarsi Law, since these other relatives are not inheriting her, Karya Velo Anula, you're going to call them and they're not going to answer. So really, this is considered for the husband to be a Mace Mitzvah, and that's why he is allowed to take care of the burial. He can be Metame Law, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daftzadi Omid Aleph.